Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're looking at some additional issues that I've seen brought up in various comments, replies, and requests, but which I haven't already done videos on. Last time, we talked about whether we need to be satisfied, and this time, why the Old Testament animal sacrifices. The Old Testament animal sacrifices are a tough issue for many people. They were gross, bloody, and smelly, and given what's said about them in the New Testament, seemingly not capable of doing any permanent good. So, why would he set up the animal sacrifices as a requirement during the time of Moses? Well, as with all questions about the motivation of God, I don't think we can understand everything about it. After all, God's ways are far above our ways, and it could well be that he has morally justified reasons for instituting things like animal sacrifices, which aren't immediately obvious to us and may not be revealed for hundreds of years if they ever become clear in our area of the world at all. We're not in any firm position to pass judgment on the value of his logic. The factors that God has to deal with in making his decisions are far too numerous for us to comprehend. Our best efforts at understanding them might not even be close when we attempt to answer these questions. But we might be able to find answers that are just likely enough to be convincing. For instance, almost the entire substance of the Old Covenant customs and sacrifices share a common factor, things being separated from other things or being purified of contaminants. This explains the ritual washings, the way they were told to keep things in different containers, etc. Don't mix this thing with that thing, especially don't you go mixing with these other people in the area. Why such exclusivity? Well, there's a clue in, according to Jesus, the first and greatest commandment. I am, I am the Lord, Lord thy, thy God, God, who brought, who brought thee out of the out land of, of Egypt, Egypt, out of the house, house of bondage. Of bondage. Thou shalt, thou shalt not have strange, strange gods, gods before me. me. Thou, thou shalt, shalt not make, make to thyself, thyself a graven thing, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, nor of those things that are in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not adore them, nor serve them. I am the Lord thy God, mighty, jealous, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and shewing mercy unto thousands to them that love me and keep my commandments. Exodus 20, 2-6 The people of Israel were a group of people who had no national identity because they had no nation at the time. They'd been led by God into the wilderness after a dynamic escape from Egypt, and in spite of that, one of their first actions, once Moses' back was turned, had been to make an idol in the shape of an animal and start worshipping it. Why? Because they'd just been living in Egypt. The Egyptians worshipped idols with the heads of animals. These were people who were accustomed to worshipping basically anything that moved, and now by some means they needed to have it drilled into them that it was not okay. They were to worship God and only God, and see clearly that animals are just animals, not something to worship. Now, look at which animals they were told to sacrifice. Rams, goats, bulls, and a gaggle of different kinds of birds. Not just because these were the kinds of animals they had, but all of these were also worshipped in Egypt in the form of their various animal-headed Egyptian gods. Bulls in particular have a special place in the rites because the bull was the form of their first betrayal against God after being rescued, worshipping a golden calf. The general idea is almost spelled out in Exodus 8.26. And Moses said, It cannot be so, for we shall sacrifice the abominations of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. Now if we kill those things which the Egyptians worship in their presence, they will stone us. Was something this extreme needed? Apparently, because even this wasn't enough. Despite this extremely severe form of instruction, within a very short time the people of Israel were up at the high places, worshipping other people's gods again. Of course, this is only one possible explanation for the animal sacrifices. There might be more to it than that. However, I think this is the explanation that has the most supportive evidence behind it. Next. Do faithful Christians have glory now? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.